By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Zaandam, the Netherlands, for the Zombie Cup 3. This is a round number two match. And I'm really looking forward to this match. It's just going to be a lot of fun. Just some information about the Zombie Cup, Cup first, the rule sets uh, that we're following here for this tournament. It is Swedish rules with the ban and restricted list, but with Fallen Empires. And Fallen Empires is included because when this tournament took place, they were also celebrating 30 years of Fallen Empires, which is actually this year, 2024. So uh, that's pretty cool, right? Um, so they were celebrating that. So Fallen Empires was allowed. Normally with Swedish, you don't allow Fallen Empires. Now, if you want to know more about the rule set, by the way, please check out the description below for more information. Now, in today's match, we have David, who's playing Orcs. I'm really, I'm kind of in love with your deck, David. It's so cool. So he's playing Orcs. Um, more about that in the deck deck. It is so cool. And he's playing against Hermann. And Hermann also has a very cool deck, but it looks like a way more powerful deck at first glance. Um, I've called it Soul Canar's Troops. It's blue, red, and black. And I mean, it's got all the power cards. It's got Serena Befreeds. It's got like, it's a, it looks like a very serious deck. So I'm just really curious to see if, if this match is going to hold up. I wouldn't be surprised if the orcs get completely overpowered. But I hope, of course, that the orcs, you know, will stand tall and will have a victory. Uh, but first, of course, the deck decks. I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. Uh, but before I jump into the deck decks, a quick message from our sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. Okay, and we are back and ready to dive into the deck decks. I'm going to start with the player on the left, that is David. Let's take a look at his Orc deck. And here we see the deck of David. So this is Orc Tribal and I'm just, I'm so happy you brought this deck to this tournament. It's so awesome. You don't see Orcs being played that often, let alone at a tournament. So this is super cool. Um, I just first want to focus on the orc on the left top corner because I think that's actually the best orc of all of them and that's Orcish Artillery. Orcish Artillery is a 1-3 creature for 2 red and 1 summon orcs that reads um, tap to do 2 damage to any target but you will suffer 3 damage as well. And this card works together really well with that white card under there, Spirit Link, because if you enchant... Uh, Orcish Artillery with Spirit Link, you start to gain life because Spirit Link reads whenever enchanted creature deals damage, you gain that much life. So Orcish Artillery in total deals five damage. Three of that damage goes to you, but that means you also gain five life. So in total, you uh, you you win, you net a bonus of two life every time you use your Orcish artiller Artillery, and of course you deal two damage um, to any target as well. So you just get great value if you can combine these two cards. The problem, of course, is always with enchant creatures. You're setting yourself up for two for one. If your opponent has, for example, a lightning bolt, it can kill the artillery as soon as the spirit link is enchanted on it or in response to the enchant. Um, and then you lose two cards. So it's pretty vulnerable. But I mean, once you've got it going and maybe your opponent doesn't have an answer to it, then it's a really nice combination of, uh, of cards. Now, another card I want to highlight here is Orcish Captain. I mean, look at Orcish Captain. That art is <laughs> just... It's hilarious. He is so ugly. Um, but what it does is so cool. It's a coin flip card. So it's uh, one red for a 1-1. One, one. You pay one and it, it reads flip a coin. If you win the flip, target or gets plus two plus O oh until end of turn. If you lose the flip, it gets minus O oh, minus two instead. So this is really kind of like an all or nothing card, right? You flip it. I guess you could flip it on your Orcish Artillery because it has three toughness. So it's not going to die. But if you flip it on the uh, Iron Claw Orcs, they are going to die because they are 3-2 If you do or 2-2. And if you do it on the other orcs, um, I forgot the name, but the, the, the orc from Fallen Empires that cannot block, um, it, it's a 3-2, right? So you kill it with your with your orcish captain. But I love like kind of that all-in attitude of orcs. I think if you play with orcs, 
you just have to go for it. I think flavor-wise, one card that he could have added here was a rocket launcher because, of course, it has an orc on there as well. Um, but I'm really liking this deck, and I think the strategy is, is pretty obvious, right? You just want to play out your orcs, turn them sideways, attack with them, try to get your orcish artillery spirit link machine going. And then, of course, you have a lot of burn. You've got four chain lightnings. You've got four bolts. So, you know, you just want to continue dealing damage uh, that way. So, I mean... That part of the strategy is actually actually pretty good. And I understand that he's not playing with Swords to Plowshares main. There are two in the side, but no main. And I think that is because you don't want to give your opponent life. You know, you, you want to take life away. You don't want to give him life. I also like the inclusion of Blood Moon. I think in this matchup, Blood Moon can actually be quite good. Talking about that, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Hermon. So, I mean, it is uh, blue, it is black, and it is red. Those are the three colors. And I have to say, Hermon, your deck looks mighty powerful. It, it, I, I feel sorry for those little orcs that we just discussed because this is looking painful. You've got four Surrendip Afrits, four Suchis, two uh, Surrendip Jins, and then you've got two Solkanar. So very big, powerful creatures that are actually quite cheap to cast Especially if you if you look at the stats, right? You pay three mana for a three four flyer, right? The surrender Befreed. That's pretty nuts. For four mana, you get your four four Suchi. Remember, this is Swedish rules, so no mana burn. And then you've got your surrender Jin, which is a five six flyer. Those are Mahamoti Jin stats for two blue and two. Now, of course, with the surrender Jin. During your upkeep, you have to sacrifice a land. If you can't, the Surrendip Jinn is uh, destroyed. Um, and if you sacrifice an island, you actually take three damage. And that also goes, of course, when you sack a dual land that's also an island. For example, Volcanic Island is an island and a mountain. So if you sack your Volcanic, you also take three damage. Um, the Solkanar is a 5-5 five, five for 5. What's not to, la to love? The hard part, of course, of the Solkanar is the casting cost. So you got to have uh, a blue mana, a red mana, and a black mana. But if you do... It's a great creature. And I, I think just to go back to the Surrendip Jin, because I think that creature really shows the, um, the danger of this deck. This deck is almost like a suicide deck, right? A lot of cards in here can hurt yourself. You've got your Surrendip Afrit, deals the damage during your upkeep. Your Surrendip Jin, if you have to second island, you start dealing damage. He plays a full playset of City of Brasses, which he probably has to because of the mana base, but that also means they're gonna hurt. If you play with four, it adds up quickly. I usually just play with three max because of that. Um, and then we also see a full playset of Psionic Blasts. Again, great card, very powerful, but it also hurts you. Talking about Psionic Blasts, he's got a lot of direct damage in his deck as well, right? Four Lightning Bolts, four Psionic Blasts. So I think with this deck, despite the fact that your creatures are not one drops, you know, they cost a little bit more, but this is definitely a deck that wants to be in the attack, right? <laughs> you just want to hurt your opponent from the get-go. Um, from that perspective, it's interesting to see uh, the three copy artifacts together with the three IC manipulators. I can see the copies working together quite well uh, with the Suchis. And the, um, uh, the IC manipulator, of course, is more of a control card. So it's interesting to see it in here. I do think it could be quite good, especially against Mazes. Like Maze of If is a card that especially Surrender Befreed, but also Surrender Jin really don't like. Like, you need to keep attacking with those creatures, and with an Icy, you can tap those lands down. So, so that's a solution to that. Um, yeah, so I think it's a really, really strong deck. It looks much more powerful than the deck of his opponent today, so this could be a walk in the park for Hermann. But then again, because he's dealing so much damage to himself, that could kind of backfire on him. Because remember, the Orc strategy is also turn the creatures quickly sideways, uh, deal some damage with Orcish Artillery. He's, he's got Chain Lightnings, Lightning Bolts. So, you know, if Hermann gets low enough because of his own spells and his own creatures, then he could get into uh, into the danger zone. Um, before we start with the match, though, one little sneak uh, or a little peek into the sideboard of Hermann because it looks uh, like it's a transformational sideboard. So he's got four Winter Orbs, four Black Vices, three Angst, and four Blood Moons. So... That is really interesting. It looks like a really good sideboard against uh, the deck, for example, right? Because you try to um, to play your Blood Moons to make sure that the mana base doesn't work anymore for the opponent. Uh, try to keep him small with the Winter Orb so that I could see that work. But I think with this sideboard, I would even consider maybe taking a Blood Moon out or a Winter Orb out and add like two Atox in the sideboard as well. Because then you can have like this transformational sideboard where you start playing Atox in the second game. That could be could be a line. But anyway, just something I noticed when looking at this deck photo. Beautiful deck photo, by the way, Harriman. Really, really beautiful deck. Um, okay, so this is the deck of Harriman. We looked at the deck of David, and that only means one thing. We are ready to go to the match. 
round number two of the Zombie Cup. Game number one, here we go. So on the left side, on the play, we have David, who's playing Orcs. Look at that Orcish captain turn one. I love it. In case you don't know what it is, it's a card from Fallen Empire. It's a 1-1. One, one. And uh, you can pay one, then you need to choose target creature, flip a coin. If you win the flip, the creature gets plus two, plus oh. But if you lose the flip, the creature gets minus oh, minus two. So you're basically killing your own creature. Uh, anyway, he's taking on Hermon, and Hermon is uh, playing a three-color deck, blue, red, and black. And he's playing pretty big creatures like Sulkanar the Swamp King, and Surrender Befreed, and Surrender Jin, and Suchi. So pretty powerful deck, fully powered as well. Here we see a Lightning Bolt on the Orcish Captain, another Orcish Captain by David and a pass. I am liking this. I'm loving all these uh, captains. And if they soak up bolts, that's not too bad of a deal if you ask me. Really curious to see uh, what Harriman is going to do. He is playing with Moxon, but uh, obviously he hasn't found any yet. Playing a Mishra's Factory that can, of course, block the Orcish Captain if he's brave enough to animate because uh, David is playing with Disenchants and Lightning Bolts. So it has a lot of answers to a potential uh, animated Mishra's Factory. So that's always the risk. Exactly. I would just attack. He's going to animate. Are we going to see a response here? Expecting a Lightning Bolt. Oh, he's going to flip a coin. Oh, 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 I love this. He's going to flip. So if he wins the flip, it's going to become a 3-1. If he loses, the captain is dead. I think Davids is already the moral winner of this match. I mean, it's just insane. So he's doing a 5. So it's uneven. So it actually gets the bonus and it trades with the factory. That is awesome. So I guess they're not flipping coins. Instead, David is saying odds are even. And I guess you're always picking odds because you play red, the color of chaos, you know. But uh, wow, what a beautiful moment here. Another uh, volcanic here. A planes for David, but nothing else from David. That's uh, too bad. Because I think as soon as Harriman has like three lands, he can start playing his Surrendips. Tapping two, though. Okay, there's a Chaos Sword passing the turn. And there's the pass. Yeah, this is just, this is so interesting. Yep, there we see the Surrender, but damage. And uh, I mean, maybe David has Spirit Links. Remember, his deck has four Spirit Links as well. If he can get a Spirit Link on the Surrender Befreed of Harriman, that would actually be quite good. Oh, there's the Spirit Link! <laughs> Oh, 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 I love it. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Herman, but I'm really cheering for the for the Orc deck. I just have to, you know. It's just so cool to see all these cards in action. So one damage here for Herman. He'll drop to 18 and one life gained here for David. So he's going to go up to 21. And uh, wow. Now he's going to flip probably on the Spirit Link, right? Has to get... Uh, has to get rid of the Spirit Links. He's going to flip. Yeah, it is. It is hit. We couldn't really see the rotation, but was it a full rotation? Okay, I guess it is. If both players agree, that's uh, what really matters with these matches. And we couldn't see the flip, of course. So there's the attack for three. So David uh, dropping here to 18. Oh, he's going to take a time walk. Going to drop to 17, though. Going to take another damage. Going to go to 16. But it's looking mighty good again for um, for Harriman here with that extra turn. There's uh, probably going to be an attacker exactly. The surrender into the red zone. 15 here for David. And there's a pass. No land drop by Harriman here. Not finding any lands. And I mean, David, of course, needs luck with this matchup. And I'm hoping that he gets it. I'm really rooting for the Orcs. He's tapping three. Whoa, there's an Orcish Artillery. So this is the one three creature. You can tap it, deal two damage to any target. And then you also deal three damage. It also deals three damage to you. Uh, so this is really good if you have that Spirit Link again. Those uh, cards work together quite well. And of course, if he also has maybe later in the game a Bolt or a Chain Lightning, you could play that on the Surrender and then deal the final points of damage with his Artillery. I think a bigger problem here for David is that he's going to probably just pass turn and then Herman's going to have another turn to hit him, going to put him on 12 probably. And remember, Herman also plays with a lot of direct damage himself. He's playing with four lightning bolts and four psionic blasts. So you don't want to get too low. There's the attack. 12 here for David. 
No lands. At least that's something here for David. No lands. Gonna tap two. Ooh, there's a Chaos Orb. Are we gonna see a counter spell? Yeah, there's the counter spell. I believe he plays with two counter spells and a mana drain. Ooh, and there is the Chain Lightning. I like how he ordered this to first go for um, Chaos Orb, then he counters it so he doesn't have enough mountains to send the Chain Lightning back. So three damage now on the Serendip. And then he could kill him. Oh, he's gonna go for double chain. I would be tempted to go here for a single chain and then use the artillery. Then again, you you don't want to go to nine, I guess. So maybe this is the better play. Anyway, Herman now on nine. And uh, David on, sorry, on 14, Herman. And uh, David on 12. But uh, Herman not really finding any lands, right? Look at that, a pass again. So he's very unlucky here, Herman. Not finding lands, probably having high casting cost creatures. Ooh, and there is a strip mine making matters even worse. In response, there's going to be a Psionic Blast. That does mean more damage. Wow, and look at that. Harriman is now on 10 already. Of course, David also took some damage. He's on 12. Sorry, uh, David's on 8. But, um, I mean, I have to say the Orc deck is doing much better than I thought. Of course, helped by the fact that Herman uh, didn't find any lands for the longest of time. Now he finally finds an island, but of course that uh, strip mine took care of the volcanic earlier, so he's kind of stuck on three mana. There's now the lightning bolt on the artillery. Three cards in hand for David. Okay, Iron Claw Orcs, 2-2. Two, two. That can start chipping in as well. So Herman probably really needs land number four to start playing out his Suchis. His Surrender Jins, his Icy Manipulators, and of course Solkonar being five, but really cannot find any, any lands here. There's the attack again. Yes, yeah, Ionic Blast, this is really not what you want to do. Take three damage, right? One of City of Brass. Oh, and that's it! Double Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, end of the road! Oh, oh. oh my goodness, I cannot believe it. Unbelievable, the Orc army here getting a, getting a first uh, game win. Wow. Now remember, it's just game number one though. Now both players are going to uh, dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game number two, here we go. So Hermon on the plate, starting with a Volcanic and a Pass. And let's hope for Hermon that he can find some lands. There's a quick strip mine on the Volcanic and a Pass. There's another dual land. So both players kind of building up. There's a Mistress Factory from David. Really curious how this uh, game two is going to unfold. There's a Badlands. There is a Mountain, a Plateau actually. Are we going to see an Iron Claw Orc or an Orcish Captain? No, we're not, just a pass. Also no attack with the Factory, which I think is a good decision. And there's a Surrender Befreed from Harriman here on turn uh, turn four, actually, after that strip. And uh, that's a pretty good card here. There is, oh, a Red Elemental Blast coming in from the sideboard and the attack for two, because now Harriman is tapped out. So it's kind of uh, two points of free damage here. Yeah, Red Elemental Blast, quite good against uh, the deck uh, of Harriman. Harriman tapping three, another Surrender, passing the turn. Are we going to see another red elemental blast? I guess we're not, or else he would have played it. Or, okay, there's a chain lightning on the life total of Harriman. Ooh, another chain lightning on the life total of Harriman. Wow, super aggressive here. So 12, untap, upkeep, take a damage, 11. So David really has a clear plan here. Thinking, you know what? I'm going to try to outrun you. If you attack, then I can attack with my factory. There's the attack for three. And I mean, with the Surrender Perfreed, you have to attack, right? It's a creature that's not made for the defense, for sure. Okay, there's a Time Walk, so that helps, of course. It's going to drop, uh, is he already on 10 or 15? Not quite sure. There's the attack. Probably on 10, actually, after those uh, double chains. There's another Surrender. So, I mean, this is, this is risky. I get Harriman. This is what his deck wants to do, but, oh, another chain! 
And I mean, David is finding all those bolts and chains, right? Another one? Another one! He's on four! He's gonna drop to two! He's, he's gonna die here! He's gonna die! And this kind of shows the, 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 the thing I discussed in the, in the deck tech. Um, what I talked about, I said, you know, Harriman's deck is, is beautiful, it's very strong. However, there are a lot of cards in the deck that's actually hurting him. And, and Solkanar is basically his only life gain. Look at this, uh, David taking six, now going to drop to eight. But the problem here is those Surrendips. Oh, now he's got a flip on his own Surrendip of free. Oh, this is so funny. This is so funny. Yeah, that's a hit. So he's got a flip on his own Surrendip. Wow. What a game this is. But even then he's in trouble. And now he can attack with the factory win the game, actually. He can just attack. Oh, he's got another bolt. He could have just animated and attacked here. Wow. David winning here with Orc Tribal. That's insane. And I guess, I mean, looking at this matches, it's not that insane. Because, again, the, the weak point of, of Harold's deck is he's hurting himself. And that is great, of course, for David. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. But uh, wow, wow, wow. Insane, insane victory here, and showing once again what I've what I've said multiple times on this channel. You don't necessarily need all the power cards. You don't need all the dual lands. You don't need all the moxen. Just build a deck with what you have. Have a fun time. Have a good time. Order a couple of beers. You're gonna definitely win a couple of rounds, and sometimes you're even gonna beat a power deck. It can happen, and um, yeah, beautiful. So um, thank you guys. Thank you for showing your skills here on the channel. It's, it's been a joy. Next week, I will be back with more action from the Zombie Cup. So uh, if you don't want to miss a thing, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, and uh, before you go, another thing, you could also uh, like, comment, and share this uh, on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward as well. YouTube loves that stuff. So if you have a moment, please leave a like, leave a comment, share it somewhere. That would really be appreciated. Talking about being appreciated, you can also become a patron of the show. You can help me continue making these videos for you. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks about all the ins and outs and how you can join the uh, Patreon program and become a patron of the show. It already starts for just $1. And um, uh, for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and you can get your name in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ich kann das Fink, das Sumba, kann